Occasionally, I run across software that I need to benchmark in my videos. Usually, it's because it's like, hey, this is a Rust implementation of Find. It's going to be 5,000% faster. Here's an implementation of Sed. It's going to be 10,000 times faster. Usually, they'll make some outlandish claims, and I need to go and test the claims to make sure that what they're saying is even remotely true. Usually, the numbers aren't as crazy for realistic situations, but there's usually going to be some reason to do that test. Now, while I can go and do the test with the find command, running that test multiple times is really inconvenient, and I just wanted a better way to make these benchmarks just easier on me. Turns out there was an application that was already doing this called Hyperfine, and that's what we're looking at today. Further on, there will be some more customization, but if all we want to do is run a simple benchmark, running the command is absolutely dead simple. So if we go and run hyperfine and then pass in the command we want to benchmark, so let's say I want to go and test ls, for example. If we go and run this, it'll start running the benchmark. It'll actually show us an output of how the benchmark is actually running, and it also shows us some warnings for ways the benchmark could actually be improved. I'll get into these warnings in just a bit, but let's say we want to go and run a command that actually needs to take in some options. Let's say I want to go and benchmark, because we're using ls, let's say... Uh, ls-a. Now, running it like this won't actually work because dash a is going to be considered one of the options for hyperfine. What we need to do instead is actually go and enclose this inside of quote marks, and then we can go and run it. It's going to go and run the test exactly the same way, and as we can see, it takes about as long because it, it's the ls command. Now, there's one little problem here. The two set of runs that we've done have completely different numbers of runs. The first one did 3,058, and the second one did 2,768. And if I ran a command that took a little bit longer to run, like let's say the find command, it might only run it a couple hundred times. Now, this might not be that big of a deal, but when you're benchmarking something, you probably want to minimize the number of variables you have and make sure you're just testing the application. Luckily, Hyperfine does give us a way to actually control this. So we have the dash dash min runs option, we have the dash dash max runs option, and the dash dash runs option. So min runs and max runs basically let you control the range it's actually going to do. So let's say I want to run between 500 times and uh, let's say 700 times, for example, and go and run that. And then if we go past in the ls command, as we'll see, now it's going to run it for far less times, and this time it ran all 700 runs. And then the runs option is going to set the exact number of runs it's going to do every single time. So let's say I want to go and run 5,000 times, and this is more than we did on the first two times, so this is going to take much longer to actually run, but it should give us a better average in the case of a command that takes a long time to run and has, a, I guess, a lot of outliers. So far, our results have just been in milliseconds, but sometimes you run a command that takes so long to run that you don't care exactly how many milliseconds it is. Sometimes seconds will be accurate enough. Let's say you're trying to compare find commands and you're running it over your entire file system, for example. So if we want to go and set that, we use the dash dash time dash unit option, and then you can pass in second or millisecond. Now, because I don't want to be here all day, we're going to run a much shorter command. So if we go and run this now, as we're going to see, it's going to try to run the actual tests. Now, it might actually take a while to do. Okay, there we go. It's done the initial setup, and now it's showing us the results in seconds. It is still showing the user and the system output as milliseconds, though. Since this warning is here anyway, let's actually talk about warnings. So in a lot of cases when you run a command, the first time you run the command may not be exactly the same speed as the consecutive times. So let's say you're trying to access your file system, for example. The problem you might have is your file system might just not be cached. And the first run has to go and cache that and then run the command. And then the consecutive runs after that will be much, much quicker, which very much does bias the result, especially in cases where you're not doing that many runs, like with find here, which is only doing 10 of them. And nicely enough, it doesn't just complain about the benchmark, it tells you how you can actually go and fix it. So in this case, you should consider using the warm up option to fill those caches before the actual benchmark. Alternatively, use the prepare option to clear the caches before each run. I think the warm up option is going to make this test overall a bit faster rather than having to recache every single time. So if we go and do a dash dash warm up, that should go and fix the problem. Now warm up does require a number of times to do the warm up. Let's just say we want to run the warm up 
three times. That should be fine. And it's going to do the warm-up first, then do the actual test. And we shouldn't have an error this time. Perfectly fine. And because we are only doing a couple of runs, we can see the results are far, far more accurate right now, rather than being just completely pulled apart by that outlier. Now, some of the warnings you just can't really do anything about. For example, if you go and run hyperfine with the ls command, you'll notice there'll be a warning in here saying the results may be inaccurate. So because the command took less than 5 milliseconds to complete, it can't really accurately measure the time it took. Also, if you're doing something like, say, recording a video or playing a game or really anything else that's going to require a varying level of performance, it'll also go and complain about this and say, hey, maybe you should consider rerunning this benchmark on a quiet PC without any interferences. Now, in the case of running LS, I've noticed that this shows up every single time. Maybe we can address it with the warm-up option, but... Because it is taking such a short amount of time to run, it may still lead to there being a problem. As we can see, yeah, that's not actually going to fix it. Because the command, no matter what we do, is going to have statistical outliers, that warning will always be there. When you run an application that's written well, when it finishes running, it's going to return an error code, and that error code is going to be error code 0, meaning the application ran successfully. But there are other error codes that can be returned, and those mean the application failed to run properly. Now, when Hyperfine encounters an error code that is an error code 0, it's going to stop the benchmark because there's obviously some sort of problem with the application. Now, if you want to instead ignore those problems, what you can do is run Hyperfine dash dash ignore dash failure, and it will just continue running ignoring those and just acting as if nothing happened. Maybe you're trying to test some sort of application where failing is actually a valid way to end the application. Up until now, we've just been testing one application at a time, but you don't have to actually go and do that. Let's say I want to go and test three of them. So let's say I want to go and test LS, I want to test uh, EXA, and we'll test, I don't know, ls a as well all you need to do is just have a space separate list of the commands and then go and run it and we'll then run them one by one by one and i'll cut back to when it's done and then at the end it's going to show you this nice little summary of how the results actually played out so in this case ls is the fastest application faster than ls a and also exa now, sometimes when you run a benchmark, it's going to produce some sort of artifact. Maybe it's going to go and produce some sort of file because you're testing, like, a modification of the touch command. Maybe it's going to go and modify a file. Sometimes you want to make sure that all of those artifacts get cleaned up after the benchmark is over. So what you can go and do is run the hyperfine dash dash cleanup option and then pass in some command to go and do that. Obviously, it's going to very much depend on what you're trying to do for the command you actually want to run, but it is a good option to have here. I guess my camera just died there. Now, one thing you may need to do is have separate prepare and cleanup commands for the different benchmarks you're running. And luckily, Hyperfine lets you do that. So if we go and run Hyperfine and then pass in ls now if we go and pass in dash dash prepare this is going to be a prepare command for this first command we're running so i'm just going to make it the ls command because i don't have a proper way to test this and let's say we also want to go and run the exa command as well now if we pass in a second prepare this prepare is going to be related to the second one once again i'll just use the ls command now we're not actually going to see it run because it's going to be such a short run but it is actually running those commands separately by default, running the command is going to be done with your system shell, which in my case is dash, but for you might be something like bash or maybe even zsh if you're on something like macOS. Now, sometimes you may want to test it with a different shell. Maybe you want to see if it's faster in a different shell or something like that. What you can do is run hyperfine dash dash shell and then pass in the path to your shell. So in my case, I'm going to do slash bin slash zsh. And let's go and test out the exa command. Now, it's not going to be that much different from running it with dash, but there will be some sort of difference. Like we saw before with the prepare command and the cleanup commands, we can actually go and set a different shell for each of our different tests. So, for example, we could do something like test out if exa is going to be faster in zsh, or instead of doing bash, let's go and see if it's faster in dash. If we go and run this, probably it should be faster in dash, otherwise I really shouldn't be using this shell. And as we can see, it is considerably faster. Sometimes you may want to run the same command multiple times, but with different input, and you don't want to write it out by hand. Luckily, Hyperfine provides a way to actually automate this. There's two ways to do this. We have parameter scan and parameter list. 
parameter scan is going to let us iterate through a list of numbers. So firstly, we need to give the variable a name. I'm just going to call it test. We'll start at one and we'll end at three. Then we have to go and define the command we want to run. So in this case, I'm just going to run the echo command and we'll pass in the variable right here. So if we go and run this now, as we'll notice, the first run is running echo with one, second run is doing echo with two, the next one is then going to do echo with three. Regardless of the starting and ending values, by default, the step size is just going to be one. But maybe you want to go and change that, and maybe you want to go and have the step size actually include decimals. So if we go and pass in dash dash parameter dash step dash size, we can go and define that. I'm going to go and set the parameter size to be... 0.5 and if we go and run this again as we're going to see the first one starts on one but the second one is going to be 1.5 then it'll be two so on and so forth until you actually hit the ending point now parameter list lets you pass in a comma separated list of values which will then be passed into the actual command to run so let's go and say pass in ls and also pass in exa. And the command we're actually going to run this time is we're going to use the variable to define the command. So in this case, I didn't actually give it a name. We'll call it test again. So let's go and put test here and do test dash A. So the first test is going to do ls dash A. And then the second test is going to do exa dash A. Now, sometimes the results you see here aren't going to be in the form that you need them to be in. Yes, this is a useful summary, but if you need, say, a full list of every single run, this isn't going to be exactly helpful. Luckily, we can go and export all the data though. So if we go and run hyperfine dash dash export and then dash either ASCII doc, CSV, JSON or markdown, it'll go and output it into that format. I'm going to go and use JSON and then we have to define where we want the file to be saved. I'm just going to save it as file.json and then let's run the test on ls. Give that a second and it is still going to output all of these summary sort of stuff on our screen but if we go and run vim on file.json as we can see it shows us every single run that's being done all 2837 showing a much wider number of decimal places so this can give you a much more accurate result of what you're actually seeing if you don't care about seeing any output on your screen, what you can go and do is pass in the dash dash style and then none option. And then it's going to go and run the benchmark and then hide everything for you. When it's done, it'll still output the warnings, but the results themselves aren't actually going to be shown until you actually go and look at a file. Now, if you're not outputting to a file, it's just going to run the benchmark and you'll have no idea what's happened. Now, over on the GitHub, there is this scripts folder and this folder contains some advanced scripts to go and modify your output data into some other form, such as, say, a histogram. Now, this only works with the JSON data, and these scripts are not actually integrated into the application. So if you want to use them, you have to go and download them separately and put them into wherever it is that you normally keep your scripts. I really don't know why they're not integrated. Maybe it's just something that's going to be integrated in the future and they're just not there yet, but it is a little bit weird. Obviously, because you're just outputting into JSON data, you could go and write your own Python scripts to do this anyway, but I would like to see these actually more available. I am going to be heavily using this application for future videos. It has made benchmarking so, so much easier. I don't really care about benchmarking outside of the video context, but if you guys do, let me know your thoughts on it in the comment section, not the description, down below. I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Donald, Logan, Michael, Andrew, Nathan, David, Carl, Will, Brennan, Chikabento, Jamie, Joseph, Josh, Mitch, Pity, Stephen Tease, Through, Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support work, there'll be links in the description down below. I have also got my podcast tech over t available basically anywhere and then this channel is available on odyssey if you want to watch it somewhere that isn't youtube i've also got a gaming channel where i play video games twice a week that is Brody robertson plays on youtube and twitch i think that's everything for me and i'm out i also need to work on this outro